But what we'd like to do now is turn to other updates um, that we have from us. And Catherine, um, I'll invite you back um, if you could provide us with an update on the record keeping monitoring exercise, please. Great. Um, hello again. OK, um, I think my slide's just coming up. Yep, it is. OK, as many of you are aware, this year was the first annual monitoring exercise and the first monitoring that we had done in nine years. The key objective for this year's exercise was to establish a baseline, an overview of the level of maturity and conformity of public officers records management. Um, each public office was asked to use the new records management assessment tool or the RMAT, whichever way you call it, and to provide the results of the assessment to us. While our focus this year was on the scores for each question of the RMAT, we found the comments made by the public officers very useful in understanding your responses and also understanding your challenges. Some public officers also went to the effort of identifying the evidence they had used to justify their assessment scores. And this was great work and we thank you for um, providing this additional information. 246 public officers or 65% of the jurisdiction responded to the request for the assessments. Um, and the 60, I've included a breakdown of the 65% of, um, of the respondees, um, which identifies which types of public officers actually responded. As you can see, the responses are from across all of the jurisdiction. And so we feel the results of the monitoring exercise can be extrapolated across all public officers and is indicative of the baseline um, of, pu of public office records management, maturity and compliance. And I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody who participated because I do appreciate all your efforts in um, doing the assessments and sending them in on time. So thank you, everybody. Um, could I have the next slide, please? Okay, so let's look at the results. Average scores have been produced for each question and each category in the RMAT. The overall average total score for the jurisdiction is 2.67 out of 5. Um, the baseline compliance level is 3 out of 5. So the jurisdiction is actually sitting under the, the baseline of compliance. The score for the jurisdiction of 2.67 actually places the jurisdiction into level 2 of the maturity levels. So the jurisdiction is actually sitting at the developing level. I'd like to see if next year in our overall average score, if we can get up to level, if we could actually score three, um, and if we could actually move up the maturity levels to the defined level. Um, we've produced a, re a detailed report on the monitoring exercise, and this is available on the website. The report includes a range of scorecards, so you can compare your assessment results with, and performance with the overall average score. We've also uploaded all the submissions from this year's monitoring exercise into the new monitoring portal. And you can use the portal to download a PDF of your organization's submission and see your overall response score and how this compares with the benchmark score of 2.67. And you can also see your scores for each RMAT category. Please note in the monitoring portal, you're only able to see your organization's responses to the annual monitoring exercise and your organization's results and scorecards. You do not have access to any other organization's responses or results. Can I have the next slide, please, Al? Okay, this is the scorecard for each RMAT question. It's included in the report and available on the website. Um, these scores are based on the 246 responses to the monitoring exercise. The average score for most RMAT questions is below the baseline compliance score of three. There's strong results for question 15, which is about create, capture and collect, and question 16, storage, which are above the baseline compliance. Question 10, um, security and protection is almost at baseline, so almost at that level three, and is also a strong result. Results for many of the questions are close to achieving the benchmark of three. 
Um, this indicates to us that record keeping maturity is generally developing, but in some questions we've actually managed to transition across to defined level of maturity. The scores for each question um, actually showed us that there's a full range of scores. So we had ones through to fives for each question. Um, so in other words, they weren't all sitting at, everyone's not sitting at number two, everyone's not sitting at number five, there was a full spread of scores. The results, including the comments made by public officers, indicate that public officers understand the obligations that they have, but achieving consistency across their business is challenging. And the focus tends to be on the critical high value, high risk or crown jewel type systems. We believe that the results indicate that many public officers have been working very hard to implement the government's frameworks needed for good records and information management, while also looking at how you implement records management into your systems and businesses. The lowest scores um, received were for question nine about performance monitoring, question 18 about state archives transfer and question 19 access directions. All three questions received many comments, which gave us an understanding of the challenges you face in these areas, um, including the priority that these obligations have received in your organisations or the effort taken to actually comply with these uh, areas. The comments also have provided us, and particularly obviously um, the agency services team, with opportunities and how we can actually better assist you and improve obviously the um, services that we provide in these areas as well. Um, so we thank you for those comments because they're actually very useful to us. I'd also note that the report on the website includes scorecards like this one for each sector. So you can compare your organisation's score against like organisations. So there are scorecards for agencies, there's scorecards for councils, for local health districts, for state-owned corporations and universities. So you can compare your um, response against how others in your sort of sector are actually performing. Could I have the next slide, please? Okay, this um, slide looks at the RMAT categories. So as many of you may be aware, the records management assessment tool is divided into three topic categories, people and governance, systems and business, and information management. So the scores represented on this um, slide actually provide us with an insight of where public officers are traveling in relation to their capabilities in each of these areas. So for instance, public and uh, sorry, people and governance covers whether or not frameworks have been put in place to manage records and information management. And this scored 2.64. Systems and business goes into how we actually manage our records and that scored 2.79. And this is all about building in requirements into systems, managing records um, in a daily fashion to ensure that they're reliable and trustworthy. And the last category, information management, um, scored 2.59. And the reason I think for this low score is because this also includes the questions around transfer of state archives and the making of access directions, which we know were very low scoring um, areas on the RMAT. Could I have the next slide, please? So what's next? Um, the next, records, the next record keeping monitoring exercise will be held in March next year. This will avoid the school holidays and all the public holidays that we encountered this year. Um, so in other words, we get a clear, clear space to actually run the um, monitoring exercise. Each public office will be asked to do their assessment using the RMAT and to upload a, their assessment into the new monitoring portal. If you don't have a logon for the monitoring portal, or you're not sure who in your organisation has a logon, please contact us at the GovRec email address, which is on this slide. So we will be communicating with you well before the start of the monitoring exercise and making sure everybody's aware of what's happening, when it's happening, and what you need to do, and how to actually upload your submission. Now, um, what can you do to prepare for next year? Um, and these are my practical top tips. So I would actually suggest to you that you need to review this year's assessment and submission, 
look at what has been done over the course of 2022 into 2023 to improve any gaps or issues that you identified in your 2022 submission. Um, and I would be identifying the evidence that actually supports the level of maturity that you have chosen. Now, if you didn't lodge an assessment submission this year, then I would be asking you to put some time aside and actually start making an assessment using the records management assessment tool, um, because the work that you do now will actually help you to lodge your assessment submission next year in March. So um, we know it takes a little bit of time, so please put, a, put aside some time and start reviewing the RMAT and making an assessment against those questions. Um, in 2022, our objective was to establish a baseline of understanding of the current state of record keeping in New South Wales government. In 2023, our objective or our focus will be to look at the data from 2022 and 2023 and compare if there's been any change or improvements. Um, we'll also be looking more closely at the evidence identified in each submission and if this actually supports the level of maturity that you have chosen. And if you have any questions about the monitoring exercise or the monitoring portal, please contact us at the GovRec email address, which I've included on this slide. Um, and are there any questions? Yeah, great. Catherine, we've had a few questions. Um, I might almost start from the bottom and work my way up. So Jeanette's asked about whether next year's RMAT could include um, an emphasis on data management. Um, at this stage, no, Jeanette, it will be the RMAT that you have used for this year. Um, obviously, we need to line our ducks up. And one of the first things is obviously getting the new regulation out there, um, making it quite clear that data is part of the state record tapestry. Um, and we will also be looking at our review of the, the standard on records management and obviously beefing that up in terms of data management as well. So. No, not for next year, but it will be coming. Right. Um, but Fayina has asked a question around NAT on normal administrative practice. Um, and I'm actually wondering if one of our colleagues could put a link to the information on our website about NAT, given the comprehensive nature of that discussion. We could probably be here until yep. evening um, yep. explaining NAT. So um, Irene or, yes, great. Um, Irene has dealt with Bayina's question, which is great. Um, Jennifer has asked about the URL for the RMAT portal. Okay, so when you go on to the government record keeping part of the state records website, um, you will see something called service portal or services. Um, that's where you click and it takes you through to a logon, which takes you into the transfer portal and the monitoring portal. Um, and as I said, please contact us via GovRec if you don't have a logon and you need a logon. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, and look, I, I just want to call out the comment that Peter's actually made um, about his interactions with our staff, um, both in terms of developing uh, disposal authorities and also access directions. And, and really, it's, a, it's very complimentary. And Peter, thank you very much uh, for that comment. And uh, I'm absolutely uh, behind you in that comment as well. I think the work that we do, given, especially given the jurisdiction that we have, it's every government agency, every local government, universities, the public health system, state-owned corporations in New South Wales, um, by a, a, a small but perfectly formed team um, is extraordinary. Um, and it's always wonderful to hear that sort of feedback. So thank you very much for that, Peter. Um, I can assure you we're, we're doing our best um, and um, I, I think that our, uh, that will only continue um, throughout 2023. Um, oh, great, and people have just echoed that thought. So thank you, thank you all very much uh, for that. We didn't set Peter up to ask that question or provide that comment. I hasten to add, I hasten to add. Um, so yes, um, someone has got their hand up. Melinda, did you want to ask a question if you wanted to unmute or one of my colleagues will unmute for you. Might just be a bit of a delay while we get Melinda unmuted. Oh, you've been unmuted, Melina. Um, you may need to um, unmute yourself on your side. 
So Melinda, have we got you or? Melinda, I'm going to do a final call. Are you there? Um, or if you do have a question, pl please do feel free to put it in the chat um, or to contact us after. So are you, uh, you've been unmuted? Are you right to go or? Go on, go on, go on, I'm afraid, Melinda, but please do contact us um, or put something in the chat for any questions. Um, uh, Lorraine has asked uh, whether, you know, given the changes that are taking place, whether we'd be expecting any more changes if we have a change of government next year. Um, I think, Lorraine, some of us have been around long enough to know um, any change is possible at any time, uh, particularly in terms of if there's a change of government. Uh, I think all of us on this call should be thinking about the wonderful acronym of MOG, um, Machinery of Government Changes. Um, I think that's uh, quite, quite possible um, and any other, but certainly the uh, changes to the State Records Act and the Museums of History New South Wales legislation have all been passed um, and come into effect um, on the 31st of December this year. So no changes to that certainly are intended um, or, or uh, anticipated for that, so that's great. All right, um, if there's, uh, Mary, question or comment from you, uh, and you're muted. You're muted, Mary. You're muted. Um, sorry about that, I was talking to myself. Um, Jenny Rogers, I'm not sure we covered this, raised whether there was yeah. any consequences for 35% of agencies who didn't respond this year. Um, Thank you. Uh, and yes, Jenny, um, we will actually be contacting those public officers that didn't respond to the 2022 request for submissions and asking for submissions for the 2023. So you can expect contact from us, um, hopefully before the end of the year. Um, and I do appreciate that obviously responding to the RMAT takes some time, but my um, estimation is that responding to 2023 and onwards will actually be easier because in effect what you're reviewing is your initial assessment and whether there have been changes to that initial assessment. You won't actually have to start from scratch. It's really a case of amending and updating the existing assessment that you have made. So I do thank you for the time that you put into this year's assessment and I am extremely chuffed that we had such a great response rate and that's thanks to all of you. Um, so you do have my heartfelt thanks for doing this work and I did appreciate how much time it took from your other work. Um, but what I would say is going forward, I wouldn't expect that you will need to spend quite as much time on your assessments in the future years because as I said, it's really a case of amending and updating those assessments rather than starting from scratch. So, yeah. But yes, um, those who didn't respond to 2022, you'll be hearing from us. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Um, Melinda's got her hand up again, but has also said that her microphone's not working. So Melinda, if you don't mind, I might take your question or comment offline. Um, uh, and Tony has indicated, you know, that of course, uh, people have day jobs <laughs> yeah, to yeah. do. Um, and, the, you know, some flexibility around yeah. for agencies um, yeah. where, you know, there's extenuating circumstances and so yes. on. Yes. And I would say um, in response to that, that we did actually provide 16 public officers with the opportunity to withdraw from this year's exercise. Um, and usually the, there were obviously extenuating circumstances and situations as to why those public officers weren't able to participate. Um, we will obviously continue that process going forward. So if there is difficulties in responding to the request for submissions, I would suggest that your public office gets in contact with us next year when we actually start the monitoring exercise and have some discussions with us, raise the kinds of issues that you're experiencing and have a have a chat because as we've reiterated all the way through this, it is a collaborative cooperative process to um, do good record keeping for the state of New South Wales. So please, if you're actually having problems, get in contact with us and we can have a chat about what, what's possible. That's great. Um, Kelly's also asked about sort of the evidence um, that might inform an RMAT response 
Right. Uh, what, what we're actually looking for or okay, so documents or a list. So please do not send me your documents. I'm putting that up right front. Don't send me <laughs> stacks of documents. Um, what we're actually looking for is in the evidence field, um, in the actual assessment process in the monitoring portal, for you to actually list the things that you have used to actually support your response. Now, in the actual RMAT, there's examples, and you might be using some of those examples, or you may have other examples that your organisation has, which demonstrate or en enable you to actually say, this is the reason why I've chosen a level three, as opposed to a level four, because this, this indicates that we've done X, Y, and Z to meeting this requirement. But please do not send us your documents. <laughs> you don't yeah, need to do that. Yeah, indeed. Great, thank you. Um, look, there doesn't appear to be any other questions, so I think we might move on. Thank you again, Catherine, for that great thank presentation. You. And my apologies um, for my croaky voice. Oh, I thought you were going to apologise for the technical glitch. That you know, that, that, almost, <laughs> that, that wasn't my fault. <laughs> that almost required me to do an interpretive dance as ad-lib, so that wouldn't have been pleasant for anyone. Um, <laughs> So this is now the part for our general Q&A. Uh, I think there have been a number of questions and I hope um, informative answers um, around the legislation, but um, whether there's any questions on any other matters at this stage. Um, we've got a couple of questions submitted in advance and we might deal with those uh, first um, before uh, having a, a monitor of the, the chat box. Um, and the first one, Catherine, actually, you know, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. direct to you. You're not off the book yet. Um, <laughs> someone's asked whether it's mandatory for councils to use um, keyword AAA business classification system. Um, and if they're to, to adopt keyword AAA under Creative Commons, what are the required steps? Okay, well, firstly, it's not a mandatory requirement to use keyword AAA or keyword for councils. Um, if you're a council, I would be encouraging you to look at keyword for councils because that's more relevant to your business than, say, for instance, keyword AAA. Um, we have placed both products under Creative Commons licenses and they are available on our website for you to download and to use. Um, you don't actually even need to tell us that you are downloading and using them. You can just go straight ahead. That's why we have made them available under Creative Commons. Um, and once again, they are not mandatory for you to use. They're just there yeah. as a tool. Great. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Christy, we've had a, um, a question submitted around um, the change of government again, um, bearing in mind the state election at the end of March next year, about our advice about preparing for archiving cabinet in confidence records outside of the e-cabinet process. So there would be agencies who are outside of that e-cabinet process presumably have their own internal working documents um, when they're responding to cabinet submissions, for example. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, there is currently in the active Premier's Memorandum, um, which is M2018-01, which covers the caretaker collections ahead of an election. That still stands and part eight of that does cover management of state archives and records. Um, I suppose it depends on whether or not they're referring to archiving, as we know it can be a broad term, whether or not they're referring to transfer as state archives or whether or not they're just talking about putting their record keeping house in order. Um, but obviously, um, if they are talking about transfer, the regular transfer of archives is part of the consideration. Um, it's good records management. Um, and apart from which, it should be part of their regular routine records management of these this material anyway. But I know that the questions have come in anonymously. Um, if the person who submitted it has any has a specific burning question, um, feel free to contact us at transfer at records.nsw.gov.au and we can discuss. Great, thanks Christy. Um, Margaret's asked about um, general records management training, Catherine, I might, and I might um, flick it, this one to you. Uh, okay. So basic sort of records management fundamentals, the old courses we used to run, disposal of state records yeah. and so on, yeah. Um, yeah. with training online, but people would sometimes prefer face-to-face. -face. Any thoughts? 
Well, unfortunately, we don't run face-to-face -face training these days. Um, there are other providers who do run face-to-face um, -face training um, in the consultancy field. Um, and there's a number of different consultants who do have regular training programs. There's also um, training provided, face-to-face -face training provided through RIMPA and um, the Australian Society of Archivists, the ASA, also has online training. Um, I think in the sort of like, as everybody gives up post-COVID, there may be more face-to-face -face training opportunities, but at this stage, we aren't actually planning to re-engage in the face-to-face -face training market. Um, so yes, I would suggest contacting records management consultants um, and looking at the training offerings from RIMPA and ASA. Okay, great. Um, Jason's asked a question around um, the RMT, RMAT results, whether agencies broke those down by you know, particular system, I guess, collection systems, uh, business units and so on, because, you know, inevitably when it was all rolled up, it became a weaker response than perhaps it otherwise could have been for particular areas. Yeah. Um, Jason, this is a common question from particularly larger um, public offices. Um, what I, I have one particular example that I can recount to you because I found it particularly helpful. What they did was they did um, an RMAT assessment across business units. So each business unit was assessed for its capability and its maturity, which gave them very detailed understandings of obviously where there were issues or fantastic performance in their organisation because, yes, when you bring together all those assessments, you end up with the average of those assessments, but it doesn't give you the granularity of where the issues might be within your business. So I would encourage organisations to be looking at it by business units, by particular um, process, if that is how your organisation is structured, to actually get that deeper understanding of what's going on in terms of record keeping and records management. Because when you are actually making your submission to us, it is at that organisation wide level. So it will give you that total average as opposed to the granularity that you would need for your um, strategic planning and um, process improvements. Great, thank you. Um, you can see from the chat um, that we've also put in the links to the current Premier's memorandum that um, Christy referred to there. Um, and I might then go to a question from Callie around um, she understands that the GA39 is being is under review. And Catherine, I don't know whether you want to take that question or we refer that to Irene. Uh, I would be happy to refer that one to Irene because um, this is outside of my area. Yes, of course. Irene, welcome. Hello, everyone. Um, anyway, so I was starting to reply to Kelly's um, message. Um, we have started reviewing GA39. However, it's not in that stage where we've started to look at the access directions. And once we've developed or drafted a, a GA39, we'll pass it on to Christy for comment. And that's where we basically incorporate those issues if, the, if we see any issues at all. So it's not in that stage yet, but we will let you know once it's drafted. Great, all right, thank you. Um, and Fayeen has asked a question around a DCS a memoranda around government information and sensitivity labelling. I'm going to treat that as a comment um, that the whole group can respond to um, in terms of uh, whether they, uh, other officers, uh, use that or have much to do that or whether they've adopted that. So uh, by all means, anyone can um, pop into the chat and um, provide their own comment on that. So that would be good. Um, I think that's about the only uh, questions and comments that we've received. Catherine, you had something else? Yes, there was one earlier comment from Burwood Council about keyword for councils um, and, I, and that it needs updating. Um, I would actually just remind everybody that we have withdrawn from um, producing keyword classification tools. Um, so we will not be doing any updating of keyword for councils or keyword AAA. 
we've actually um, placed both products under a Creative Commons license that is a share and attribution license, which enable and the type of license that we've used also enables someone to actually look at the product and um, continue its development. So if someone out there is keen to do an update to Keyword for Councils, um, it's there, um, it's a possibility. Um, but obviously um, under the um, Creative Commons license, you would also need to be in contact with us about that. Excuse me. Okay, great, thank you for that. Um, and look, we might move on from the general Q&A session for um, our next slide, Al, if you wouldn't mind um, putting that up, which is around the upcoming changes. So the immediate things um, that are likely to occur in the next couple of weeks, just so we're keeping people informed of that. Um, so of course, our two new agencies, State Records New South Wales and Museums of History New South Wales, formally come into existence um, at on the 31st of December, um, New Year's Eve, uh, this year. Um, but prior to that, there will be um, changes and new websites um, done for both organisations over the coming weeks. And um, of course, that's not a small job. Um, it's quite a significant um, migration and transformation that needs to happen. Um, but please uh, keep in mind that that uh, will uh, likely be occurring at this stage before that 31st of December formal commencement. In fact, it might be occurring in the next couple of, of weeks. You can still go on to the records.nsw.gov.au website um, and it will uh, then have redirections to the new, for example, State Records NSW or Museums of History New South Wales websites from there and you can then update your bookmarks um, from that point. But uh, if you type in that records nsw.gov.au website, uh, be prepared for that to um, then redirect you, uh, possibly within a couple of weeks. Um, inevitably, with the creation of the two new organisations, um, there are new email addresses um, that will um, be um, in use, again, uh, likely before that 31st of December uh, period of time. Of course, uh, the old email addresses and old contact details will still be in operation, um, but once you've made that um, initial contact with us, um, you'll then again be able to use the, the new email addresses. But our old email addresses will remain active for a considerable amount of time. We're also using the opportunity um, to update um, our guidance and advice on our website, whether that relates to uh, parts two, three, four, five or six of the State Records Act, so be prepared uh, for that updating of relevant guidance and advice um, as well, which of course um, needs to work for you. So um, again, uh, while we're doing our best to tailor those messages and those changes and that guidance and advice to you, um, we welcome that feedback uh, from you um, in terms of uh, the usefulness of that information. So they're the immediate things um, that will be coming to play. Um, very likely um, before the end of this calendar year uh, that we wanted to make you aware of. Um, we remember the formal commencement of parts, changes to parts two and three of the State Records Act to start from the beginning of next calendar year and for transfer and access provisions um, to commence from the beginning of 2024. Remember, 12 month transition period. Um, for those two areas. Um, in the dying minutes of this forum, uh, please, if you have any suggestions for future records managers forums, um, please type them into the chat um, now, uh, while we are still live, or drop us a note. Um, please do feel free, these forums need to work for you. And so we're always keen to hear your ideas about what you'd like to see featured um, in these forums. Um, we'll also be uh, momentarily putting a link to a survey for today's forum um, in the chat. Um, there it is now. Thank you very much, Al. Um, and it'd be great if you could complete that survey again to help us um, tailor that mess these messages for you and these forums most effectively. Survey will take about three minutes. Um, I'd really just like to um, 
uh, close out by uh, thanking all of our speakers today. Um, I think it's been a really useful session. I hope that you agree um, with that. Um, uh, we always aim to provide as clear and current advice as we possibly can. Um, and we hope that we've certainly done that today. Um, and certainly look out for communication around the next Records Managers Forum, uh, which all the same faces will be at, um, notwithstanding that it'll be, uh, you know, a State Records and Museums of History New South Wales, State Records uh, Forum, uh, Museums of History New South Wales people will be there because we know you'll have questions around access and transfer um, and all of that. So please don't feel um, that anyone's casting you adrift um, with these changes. Mary, I'm just wondering if you had any last minute comments before we close the forum? Uh, look, look, not really, Martin. I just really want to thank everybody for, for their participation in the forum. Of course, it's my first one. And so it's pretty exciting to see over 300 people and most of them staying right right to the end. And so, and and I think the sharing of information in the chat also reveals to me that there's deep, deep knowledge um, and, and the peer relationships are really important as well as the expertise. Um, that um, State Records New South Wales and Museums of History New South Wales offers. So I'm really looking forward to working with you all um, in the coming period. Great. Thanks very much. And thanks again for your participation um, today, Mary, as well. All right. Um, with that, um, with two minutes to spare, um, I'd like to close today's forum. Um, I wish you all well. Um, please, I hope that you've um, got the, the key messages from today that we're, we're here to help um, and that as always um, please do feel free to contact us um, and you know the, the future is exciting in terms of uh, these changes um, and we're certainly um, very happy to work with you pragmatically and collaboratively um, for those changes to take place effectively. Thank you all very much um, and look forward to seeing you at the next forum. Bye for now.